We had a uh, genius idea recently. Not much of a plan, more of an idea. It would be fun to see how many miles can a person go in 24 hours on a Honda Rush. Honestly, we can't lose for winning. I know this guy. Super athletic, dumb as a brick, will know what he's getting into. My dad walked down and was like, hey, you want to do something stupid? Let's get it. I was like, I'm all about doing something stupid. You ready? We'll hopefully put Barber Motorsports on the map. That's Typical man in box production. Mm -hmm. That's what we do, we lift people up. Yeah. There's an official record with Guinness set 18 years ago, roughly 540 something miles in Australia. So we thought, hey, we can beat that. We've got a lot of great support, people foolish enough to go along with this. We just didn't have a rider. So I went home and I was thinking, who could I get? And just so happens, my kid's home from college. He was like, well, we need somebody to pilot this ruckus for 24 hours straight. And I think I'm highly qualified, if not all overqualified for this. Yeah, the reason he thinks it's a great idea, yeah, his riding background is measured in minutes. Minutes, not miles. But that's an asset to us because yeah. he doesn't have a clue. He's like, this is going to be really fun. Yeah, yeah, we'll be for about an hour. Yeah. I, I've ride bicycles when I was a child. Rode a little bit of dirt bikes, and that's about it. I rode this on Monday for five minutes. I didn't think it was too hard to ride, no clutch or anything, so it felt good. We collaborated with Boys and Girls Club, uh, Smoky Mountains, and, you know, everybody's got a chance to kind of jump in there and uh, donate for a lap. So hopefully if Ethan, who's going to be piloting this thing, can, can roll off two, three hundred laps, that'll give him a chance to kind of uh, feel a part of it and do some good at the same time. This is the best track in the world to do it on. Uh, not many people have done 24 hours alone on the ruckus. Barbara is going to do a display with this bike when we're done as a museum piece, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. Give us the opportunity to tell a little story about what I actually went on. Yeah. I, they could tell you, I, I assume he's in a short list of people that have been here solo for 24 hours. Yep. Uh, yeah, a pretty special small company. On yeah. three and a half horsepower. I'm just 170 pounds of lean muscle mass. I'm not too smart, but I don't think you need to be to ride Honda Ruckus for 24 hours. So that's what we're gonna go with. He's learning to ride. It's a pretty big ask, you know, somebody that's never ridden to put him in a 24 hour deal. Um, uh, his confidence is going up, which is a good sign. He's starting to find where he can pick up uh, pace through the corner to get more speed at the end of the straight. So, so far, uh, looks good. If we can get a little bit of dry weather, I think he can cut his lap times down and, and we'll turn more miles. Just We're going to try mouth. to get him in here for our first pit stop. we got to get some gas. He's uh, almost four hours in on his first tank, and he's a little bit hungry. We're going to get some towels or something for him to sit on, change his pressure points a little bit, fueled up. 
uh, charged up. We're ready for him to stretch out. I know his quads are going to be a little tight. Your glutes are probably hurting. We're ready. Step right over there. Mm -hmm. Drain once you got a drain. Yeah. And then uh, hop on the table. Shrimp, sausage, potatoes. He's good to go. Yes. That's good. Put another Easy shrimp in his mouth. Hey, real if quick. You come around, the towel gets where you don't like it. Just throw it off. Should have music now. You're doing awesome, bro. Woo! Same thing, about four more hours, bud. Here we go. Hey, I smell burning bell breakers. Good. That's what I think it is. Wait a minute. Why would he go to break? Rip his visor up, kid. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's your burning tire. Good gosh almighty, Ethan. You see, you smell that? The tire was in the wheel. I thought I smelled something. You're doing great. That's burning oh, bell. The, uh, the towel's up against yeah. it, rubbing it. She's hot. Ooh, when his butt cheeks were going to Bushy sleep, we thought it, was, <laughs> thought it was a good idea to put a towel under him, like move the pressure points a little bit. Well, the corner of the towel got underneath the fender pinned against the tire. So, Kev, can I be my van of white here? Uh, th this right here overall. didn't used to look quite like this right here. What would the issues with that have caused us? Um, like Mark death. would say, death or dismemberment. <laughs> you can be dismembered before you die. Oh, you, you, never, you don't know. But hey, he's good now though. Yep. So fixed it. Don't show Erica this part, then it'll be okay. Nope. Take that out. Let's just go ahead and get that rubber off the track. Yeah, his mom don't need to know anything about this. Yep. Yeah. Complete idiocracy. <laughs> You ready to catch him? What do you think, okay? That ain't a good sign. No. You'll pull him off even cold shower? Morning. Morning. How you doing, brother? I need some caffeine. Starting to sink in on you, a little caffeine? Yeah. Look, I want to see you. Yes, might be good for your you first you full break. Better, okay? Hmm? No need to send you right back out. We got to get you feeling better, okay? All right. All right. Hey. You want to strip down and take a cold shower? Do I have time for that? You yes. don't have time to fall over dead. So I, I mean, yeah. less or evil at this point. So you think you, you're still you well ahead of record pace. So you're still well ahead. Let's, let's just get it. Start stripping you down. Yeah. I was hallucinating at like 4 a.m. this morning. What were you hallucinating about? At least uh, all good. it was was like, you know the dark spots on the track? I thought it was full of hot chicks? No, they were slithering. They were like moving. It happens. He's as strong mentally as anybody I know. And, this is an impossible task and you you know it sounded fun to us and it sounded i don't want to say it sounded easy but you thought oh yeah that's double that's double the reality of that changes when you put these gears in motion yeah i think moving forward that's my priority is make sure he's halfway lucid yeah keep him hydrated keep uh keep the cold packs on him keep him you know kind of shocked awake and and moving uh, he's he's going to ebb and flow probably all day if, Super fatigued and super excited as things kind of go along. It'll probably be a pit by pit strategy. Just get into the next cycle. Uh, so we're just a tick past halfway through, and he's done fantastic. But in full transparency, that last pit stop, he's a little glassed over, enough to give uh, cause for concern. He's uh, he's pretty tired. There's no escaping that. So getting through the night was the biggest thing, you know, nine hours of just boredom and total darkness. It wears on you and it wears on, it wore on all of us. We were kind of over it, ready for the sun to come up. And that's the first thing he said when we saw the sun cracking up is he was like, I'm glad to see some sun. So this all started as a dumb idea and it, it still is, but it becomes a, 
more serious. It steps up and the, the risk factor is becoming obvious now when you see how glazed over he is. He's done 386.6 miles. So he's 12 hours and 39 minutes in. He's almost 400 miles in. It's pretty good. If he can wake up and hang on, he'll be, he'll be good. As long as he doesn't go to sleep on the track, we're winning. So I'm starting to believe maybe he's catching some rest and riding this racetrack all at the same time is the look he had. He's a warrior. I think it was about 3 or 4 a.m. last night and it really started to hit me. I started falling asleep on the bike. So last night I was a bit nervy. Didn't really know what I was getting myself into being an inexperienced rider. Got a few miles in, a few hours in, started getting more comfortable. That's when it really started to kick in. Uh, this was going to be extremely difficult because after about three hours or so, my whole body was hurting. Fatigue started to set in. It took a lot of caffeine and a lot of just blocking it out to get it done and get to this point. So I'm, I'm way more confident now. I'm just excited about being done with it. When it all comes down to it, I hate being a failure. And it's for myself. I want to complete this for myself. I took it up, I'm gonna finish it. So that's the biggest mental thing is getting over myself being my worst enemy. A big thing in the military, we have this joke called hurry up and wait. I have hurried up and waited this entire time. If you don't rush things, they'll eventually come to an end. So here we are. We're getting there. Hey, this is Dad. Everything going good? Yeah. Ten miles out, dude. I know, dude. I'm so psyched. I'm ecstatic right now. Keep ripping them out of there, dude. You got this. I love you, man. Love you, too. Dude, I am ready to knock this out. This has been grueling. So, the fact that I'm this close, I'm not gonna stop till I'm done. One lap to go. I'm very, very determined right now. That last little turn before that straightaway is gonna have to be my new favorite, because it's the end. Oh, thanks for coming, boys. <laughs> <laughs>